This lab has to do with refraction, the refraction of waves, and specifically light waves as they refract through materials like glass. So uh, refraction is a phenomenon that occurs with uh, all kinds of wave phenomena, whether it be light waves, sound waves, uh, surface waves on water, seismic waves inside the earth, and it has to do with the fact that when a wave travels from one medium of travel to another, it can change speed, and that causes it to change direction. You can see the waves in the in the left medium, the blue medium, are traveling faster than the ones in the right medium, and that causes a change in the speed. And this is occur occurs not only with light, but with sound and other wave phenomena. For example, here is some water waves, ocean waves coming from the deep ocean towards shore. When water waves move into shallower water, they slow down because they naturally move slower in shallow water than they do in deep water. So the slowing down causes them to actually turn the corner. So they're coming into the, the shore here and sort of turning left and heading more straight toward the beach. So this is a uh, an example of refraction of water waves on the surface of the ocean. But it happens with, uh, with all wave phenomena that change speed when they change the medium of travel. Here's a image of it. This is a chopstick being seen through a glass of water and uh, you can see how distorted it is because the change of direction of the of the light from the chopstick as it goes through the glass. Now this is important. One of the most important applications of refraction is refraction in lenses. Lenses can make an image like a camera. The camera in your phone makes an image because light refracts as it enters the glass lens and focuses inside on the image plane of the camera. And the same thing actually happens in your eye. Your eye has a lens. It's not made of glass, but it's made of a protein material that's transparent. And that forms an image on the inside of your eye. And that's how you can see. So th there's, there's uh, numerous important applications of refraction. And the way refraction is dealt with theoretically, and the way we're going to do it in this lab, is through what's called the index of refraction, n. So the index of refraction in a material is the ratio of c over v. c is the speed of light in empty space. v is the speed of light in the material. So the speed of light in empty space is about 300 million meters per second, which is about 671 million miles per hour. It moves very fast. And in most materials, light moves more slowly than it does in empty space. And so the index of refraction is greater than 1. And uh, here is an example of some indices of refraction. Uh, in a vacuum, the index of refraction is 1, because V over C is 1, or C over V is 1. In air, the index of refraction is slightly greater than 1, because the speed of light is slightly less than C, the speed of light in a vacuum, so 0.9997C. So light travels almost exactly as fast in air as it does in a vacuum. And we're actually going to treat the index of refraction in air as 1. In water, it's about 4 thirds, which means the speed of light in water is about 75% of what it is in empty space. And uh, window glass, about 1.52. Diamond, it's it's high, 2.42. The speed of light in diamonds about 41% what it is in empty space. That's actually what makes uh, diamonds appealing looking. They sparkle and uh, and emit colors because of this high index of refraction. So the way we're going to use it in this lab exercise. So this say this is a block of glass. A light enters from the right, and as it goes into the glass, it changes direction. Then it exits the glass, it changes direction again. And um, the equation that we're going to use to deal with this is this right here, sine theta 2 over sine theta 1 equal n1 over n2, where n1 is the index of refraction in medium number 1 outside the block. n2 is the index of refraction of the block, say it's glass. And then the two angles are shown here. So, for example, let's, let's say we have air and glass. Light travels from air into glass and then back into air again. So I'm, the index of refraction of air is 1, so I'm going to replace n1 with 1. And uh, the index of refraction of glass is 1.52.
So this gives us a relationship between these two angles, right? So let's say, for instance, that the angle of incidence, the, where the beam comes in 40 degrees from perpendicular to the edge of the glass. So let's put the 40 degrees in for theta 1. The sine of 40 degrees is 0.643, and if I solve for theta 2, I get 25 degrees. So this tells you the relationship of those two angles. And this is what you're going to be using in this lab exercise. You're going to use the equation in several different ways, but this is the basis of it. This is the equation that you're going to use to solve all these problems.